it might not be the cold or flu or even COVID, but you are just as miserable. Try these natural remedies for allergies. Thank you for joining me today at Family Guide to Herbs Online School. I'm Carolyn Gibson, family herbalist, organic farmer, massage therapist, and I will be your instructor and guide today. Are respiratory problems more likely to come from allergies than getting the cold or the flu? Allergy symptoms are very much like the cold or the flu, except you may have itchy, watery, burning, and or swollen eyes, but you will not have fever. No aches or body pain, but you may have extreme fatigue. Now, it will last indefinitely while the cold or flu lasts a week or two, and you will have clear mucus. The best cure for allergies is prevention. Nasal rinses with a pinch of salt, with or without an herbal tea, should be your very first response. Now, I like to use an empty syringe. I find it very difficult to use a neti pot. Or at the very least, take a wet cloth and wipe out the inside of your nose when you've been outside and even gargle. Now, this would be an excellent time to wear your COVID mask when you're outside or doing yard work. Now, for those who have acute problems with allergies, you may need to take a shower after being outdoors. Now, the number one natural herbal antihistamine is stinging nettle. Yes, this is the same one that will sting you like a bee. Now, stinging nettles are considered generally safe for everyone except those who might be harvesting without gloves. Ouch! Now, stinging nettle leaves are one of the most nutritious plants on earth, providing calcium and other key nutrients, making it also effective for aches and pains and cramps. Now, what other antihistamine can claim that? The leaves are used to prevent and treat hay fever and allergies. Now, the root is used to treat BPH. Stinging nettle leaves help regulate the allergic response, decrease inflammatory markers, its astringent properties helps reduce runny nose and watery eyes. You would generally start taking stinging nettles a month before allergy season begins. Now here in East Texas, you may need to take it all year round, but that's okay because it is a great nutritional supplement. Now stinging nettles is one of those herbs that is better taken as a cold infusion. It is normally made by the quart. It really does not taste good, so peppermint or lemongrass or other more flavorful herbs may be added to improve the flavor. Now, I'm one of the few herbalists who is not an herbal tea drinker, and I take stinging nettle capsules. Uh, the freeze-dried capsules are the best, and I have trouble finding them, so I just take dried stinging nettle leaf capsules. Now, be sure and get the leaf and not the root. Now, if you could find the tincture, which I had intended to make, would work even better. Now, stinking nettles likes moist, rich soil, so it does not grow naturally on my sandy property. Now, I had always called horse mint, which grows all over our property, stinging nettle, which I found out is not the same species at all. And, of course, neither is bull nettle, which is all over my property. So I went out and bought the seeds to make sure I had the right plant. And to make sure I was getting the correct plants that are medical, I buy my seeds from strictlymedicinalseeds.com. Now, this is how the stinging nettles wound up in my compost pile. Now, as most wildflowers and herbs, you plant, them in, plant seeds in the fall. When I got the seeds in, I really didn't have a place to put them, <clears throat> so I just threw them in my pot of licorice and waited, and nothing happened. So come spring, I see some green leaves in my licorice pot. And, of course, as any good herbalist would do, I just stuck my hands right in there to see if it had any aroma to it. I was quite sure I had stuck my hands in a bed of fire ants. Then I remembered I had planted some stinging nettle somewhere. So I went back through my empty seed packages, which I usually keep, to verify that it was stinging nettle. 
And I was worried that the stinging nettle would overcrowd my licorice pot, which is what I was really trying to grow. Now, I was also worried that my grandkids would do as I had done and stick their hands in it also, because as a great-grandmother, I was teaching them how to appreciate herbs and wild plants. So we just took it and dumped it in the compost pile and repotted the licorice root. So the following spring, here it comes up my compost pile. One more chance to make a stinging nettle tincture. But I actually never had the guts to harvest it and make a tincture out of it. Are you drowning the mucus? There is an herb for that. Ambrosia, food of the gods. This native plant was once grown and harvested by Native American Indians for its nutritional value. The seed or grain is 47% protein and 38% fat. It is also loaded with vitamins and minerals. It was used by the Indians for its many medical benefits. Its pollen is the size of powder and blown by the wind for miles all over the place. Its pollen is round and spiky, kind of like a sweet gum ball. It is used to stop leaky conditions such as runny nose and watery eyes. Now, Herbless Susan Weed recommends eating a leaf a day or take a tincture daily to build up a resistance and prevent allergic reactions or take the tincture to relieve the symptoms. It is not only one of the most effective herbs to treat seasonal allergies, it is also the number two cause of seasonal allergies, mold being the number one cause. Have you guessed the name of this Jekyll and Hyde? We know it as ragweed. Now, it could be the fine leaf or common leaf, or it could be the large leaf. There, there are many varieties of it, but these are the main two. Now, if your main source of allergies are cedar, cedar fever, juniper berries may be a better remedy for you. Now, you want to use a ragweed tincture to stop the drip, but maybe your problem is nasal congestion. Now, David uh, Hoffman considers goldenrod the best upper respiratory remedy both as a decongestion and as an antihistamine. Now, goldenrod is easily spotted in the fall when it is in full bloom, getting as tall as six to seven feet. Learn to recognize it at its early stage, and it easily transplants at this early stage and just popping up wherever you don't need it. If it has been mowed down, it may be only three to feet tall or maybe two feet. And there are some varieties that just do not get tall. Now, most herb books and herbalists will tell you that goldenrod makes a sweet, tasty, and scented tea. And it was often drank by the pioneers. But the goldenrod growing here in East Texas just tastes like a weed. Now, I did order the uh, goldenrod species that's supposed to have in the scent to it, but I uh, did not have much success. Now, it is a smaller plant and blooms a month older than the goldenrod. And I first ordered it from the uh, nursery in Louisiana, and they just sent me the same variety we already have around here. So then I ordered from Moncello, who did send me the goldenrod that was a nice scented, but those plants, however, did not survive. But if you, if you would like to try, uh, it's the Jefferson Monticello Thomas Jefferson Foundation in Charlottesville, Virginia. And you can go to monticelloshop.org. Now, there are some plants that bloom before goldenrod that look familiar. and They actually have white flowers. You can identify goldenrod by its Christmas or spear-shaped yellow flower cluster. Now, goldenrod blooms around the same time as ragweed and gets the blame for allergies. Now, ragweed's pollen is very small and is easily carried for miles by the wind and inhaled by us. Goldenrod's pollen is too large for us to inhale and, in fact, is a major source of food for bees and other insects. 
Now, I make tinctures from alcohol and glycerin. Now, you could make a tea from it, which if you're getting it from East Texas, would taste awful. Or you could make an oxymel with vinegar and honey. Now, some herbalists will recommend harvesting the flowering tops with the top leaves right as the flowers begin to bloom, and others will harvest it while it is in full bloom. Now, for such a great big plant, you think you're getting a lot of herbs to harvest, but you're really just harvesting the top portion, which is still on the tender, growth, a tender part of the growth. It has the leaves and the flowers. Now, goldenrod is specifically for nasal congestion. It is also good for hay fever and allergies to cats. Now, it is good for urinary tract infections and used as a mouthwash for dental problems. But warning, if you have any kind of renal failure, don't use it. Now, if the goldenrod is not working for you, I like the essential oil of peppermint. Uh, either as a menthol salve like Vicks or mixing a little with oil and rubbing directly on the cheekbones, the neck, or the chest. I like to keep it in a roll-on bottle to roll on my cheekbones. <clears throat> now I like to mix three drops of essential oil of peppermint with two tablespoons of honey. And I place a pea size on the, this mixture on the back of my tongue. Now the molecules can go behind the pharynx into the nasal cavities as a decongestion. Now keep in mind, sometimes a stop-up nose has nothing to do with mucus, but inflammation or dry air. So peppermint is also good for inflammation. And if, if, if you're stopped up because your air is too dry, you're going to have to add a humidifier. Now does anyone doubt the sinus clearing properties of horseradish? Now you can also use expectorant herbs to thin the mucus, such as anise hyssop, ginger, garlic, onions, hyssop, licorice root, and melon. Now herbs can be made into alcohol tinctures, and you can go to my YouTube to see how to make an echinacea root tincture, which will be the same method to make a goldenrod alcohol tincture. And I will try and put the link in the description. Now, you can also make alcohol-free herbal tinctures with either oil, vinegar, glycerin. And you can also go to YouTube, search Carolyn Gibson Herbalist, and I will give you links for these. Now, uh, you can also go to YouTube. I'll try to put a link in the description for making alcohol-free herbal glycerides. And, of course, I have one on making herbal infused oils. Now, oxymels are basically herbal vinegar with honey, and you can see how to make oxymels on YouTube also. Now, thank you so much for your attention. Natural healing is not a religion. It is your first course of action, not your only course. Now, if you're not healing or getting better, see your doctor. Now, other natural antihistamines would be vitamin C, antioxidants like elderberry syrup, quercetin, apple cider vinegar and honey, and salt. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you like and enjoy this information I'm giving you, you can search my YouTube channel, Carolyn Gibson Herbalist, for more information on making herbal remedies, natural skin care, things like, like Trigger Point. And leave me a comment or a question in the uh, comment box. Uh, visit me at FamilyGuideToHerbs.com, my online school for teaching you natural remedies for you and your family. I have uh, classes on making herbal remedies, natural skin care, trigger point, and I'll, I'll be adding other classes that are related to natural healing. Thank you so much, and y'all come back.